John chapter 1, verse 40, down to verse 46. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Sacred Scriptures. And uh, pray for all the staff members of our church, all of our volunteers. Uh, we love you all so much. Uh, and um, you are constantly in our prayers. John chapter 1, verse 40 through verse 46. Again, reading from the King James Version, I'll read these verses uh, aloud. I ask that you read along. John 1, verse 40 through verse 46. Uh, this passage takes place in the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry, uh, where he is calling disciples, the twelve who are going to be his student followers. He is calling them one uh, by one, a couple of them he called one at or, or two at a time. And that's where this picks up in John chapter 1. Jesus is calling disciples. Uh, beginning in verse 40, one of the two which heard John speak, speaking of John the Baptist, and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. So Andrew finds his brother Simon. He says to Simon, I have met the anointed one. I have met the Savior. And then he brings Simon to Jesus. So watch verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon the son of Jonah thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone now watch this Jesus didn't even know his no one told Jesus his name Jesus told Simon what his name was and he gave him a new name at the same time Here's verse 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find the Philip and say unto him, follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So by this time, Jesus has called Andrew, he's called Peter, and now he's called Philip, and nobody had anything to say, but yes, Lord, I'll follow you. Yeah. But you always got some crazy folks in the bunch. Kind of like when you go to your family reunion, there's always somebody there uh, that just won't act right the way that they should. And if you can't think of anybody at your family reunion who doesn't act right, if your family members were here, they might be thinking about you. <laughs> So verse 44 again, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Watch verse 45 and verse 46. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now everybody else, when they heard that message, they said, I will follow Jesus. Watch Nathaniel's response in verse 46. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. I want to talk this morning about how to move from Haterade to Gatorade. How to move from Haterade to Gatorade. Uh, you may claim your seat in the Lord's presence. Dr. Robert Cade was the lead scientist who created the formula for what we now know as Gatorade. He was born in 1927. He passed away in 2007, but it was in the year 1965 that the formula for Gatorade was created in order to help University of Florida football players 
recover or regain carbohydrates and electrolytes that were lost during football games. Uh, in its current form, Gatorade is now distributed all over the world, not only as a liquid, you can get it in a powdered form and add water, you can also buy it as a gummy bear and chew it, and it is designed to do the same thing. One of the unique things I learned about uh, Gatorade from Dr. Cade's daughter, Phoebe Cade uh, Miles, is that we have her mother, Mary, to thank for the sweet and flavorful taste of Gatorade because it was Mary Kay who recommended to her husband that lemon be added to the formula. All over the world, currently distributed by the Pepsi Cola Company, you can find Gatorade. You can drink it in its liquid form, you can get the powder form and add water, or you can chew it in its gummy form. Would it surprise you to know that there is another beverage, an invisible beverage, that a whole lot of people have become addicted to? It is not Gatorade. It is Haterade. Somebody say, Pastor, I ain't never seen that on the shelf. It, it, it's in the store, though. Because <laughs> uh, you walk by some haters on your way in. You come back by some haters on your way out and they have become so addicted to drinking the invisible beverage of haterade until they take it straight with no filter and no chaser. Now somebody's going to act like you don't know what a chaser is. Okay, the deep saints show up on whatever Sunday this is. One of the greatest preachers who has ever lived, you can look him up uh, when you go home, uh, is Reverend Dr. Leo Daniels. He was a very tall man, uh, and he was as, let me, let me say it like I would old school, he was as black as the ace of spades. He was a dark-skinned man. Reverend Daniels was in the barbershop one day. Somebody walked in, barbershop filled with people, and they said to the folks in the barbershop uh, after the person came in, the person said, do y'all know that Reverend Leo Daniels? He's a low down, dirty scoundrel. Didn't even know that Reverend Daniels was sitting right there in the barbershop. Finally, the barber said to the man, have you ever met Leo Daniels? He said, oh yes, I've met him many times. That's how I know how low down he is and how much of a scoundrel he is. The Bible said, well, what does he look like? He, he said, he's a short, light-skinned fellow. Well, the truth was, he's a tall, dark-skinned fellow. The man was talking about somebody he didn't know and had formed a dislike for someone he knew nothing true about. Some people don't have to know you to dislike you. Yeah. It's just something about you when they hear your name. Never even met you. Some of them never laid eyes on you. But they wake up every morning and drink a whole gallon of haterade yeah. and have decided to dislike you even when they do not know you. That causes me to say three things to you very early on about this subject of haters and haterism and those who are addicted to haterade. <laughs> Pastor, what do you want to say? Here's the first one. Some haters thrive on public attention. Some haters thrive on public attention. Some people will say mean things about you just to draw attention to themselves. Some people are so small in their minds until they think that in order to make themselves seem larger, they have to pull other people down. My mama taught me years ago, son, it's not what people call you, it's what you answer to. <laughs> Some haters thrive on public attention. That's not all. Some haters thrive 
on private aggression. Those are folks that when you see them, they're in your squad, they're on your friends list, they follow you on Instagram, they like some of your photographs. Just not all of them. They speak to you when they see you in public. But if you could look beyond their faces and see what's going on in their hearts, you will discover that they are suffering from private aggression. Some haters thrive on public attention. Some haters thrive on private aggression. Here's the third one. This one might mess you up a little bit. Some haters, or I should say it this way, not all haters are bad people. See there? I knew y'all were going to get quiet, Rick, wouldn't it? Some haters thrive on public attention. Some haters thrive on private aggression. But not all haters are bad people. Can I ask you a question? And I'm going to ask it just like I feel it. Is you a hater? Come on now. Come on. Because here's reality. It's like, you know, we search on you. But Pastor, if I really would be honest, I don't hate much in public. But in the privacy of my own heart, I got some issues with some people who ain't done nothing to me. Not none of y'all in here, some of y'all cousins mad at somebody for some stuff God gave them that they didn't even ask for. Come on now. Got the nerve to be envious of their glory and you don't know the story that went behind. Jealous about something that they have, you don't know what they had to go through to get it in the first place. So it's better I'll be honest, I've lived long enough that anything I see folks with, I said, go ahead on. Jesus. I've also lived long enough to recognize that even though I'm spiritual, I'm still human. Yes. And even preachers drink hatred. Yes. <laughs> because most of us, in any area that we operate in, often struggle with horizontal comparison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look at other people and you say, I wonder how they making it. So how are they doing all of that? I'm working harder than they are. I'm doing more than they are. I'm more gifted. I'm more anointed. Why does it appear that they are moving so fast and going so far? And sometimes you got to be honest about the fact that some hatery can get in your heart too. Yeah. Last Sunday, I spoke from the end of Jesus' life where one of his disciples named Thomas was walking in doubt. Today, I speak from the beginning of his earthly ministry where another soon-to-be disciple was also drinking Haterade, and his name is Nathaniel. In other places in the New Testament, he's referred to as Bartholomew. Look at what you find in verse 45. The Bible says, Philip findeth Nathaniel, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And all Philip said to him was come and see. By the time you get to verse 46, uh, after Nathanael uh, is told to simply come and see, watch what you find in verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed 
in whom there is no guile. If you read verse 47 in the Message Bible, it says, there is a real Israelite, not a false bone in his body. And let that sink in. This is the same Nathaniel who just said about Jesus, he comes from Nazareth? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yet when Jesus saw him with his haterade drinking self, Jesus said he is a true Israelite without a false bone in his body. And that causes me to say to you that not all haters are bad people. You can catch all of us on a bad day. Y'all so deep. Don't, don't, don't raise your hand, but be honest. Sometimes in your own heart, you live in comparison. Hey, let me throw this at you for free. So, so, sometimes, it, it is this is for church folks, especially church folks who've been around a long time. Y'all deep ones. Church folks who've been around a long time, you remember, and it's, it's still a common practice and custom, when somebody passes away and there's a repast, that's the meal that they traditionally have after the funeral celebration, people bring covered dishes. And what some people will do when they bring a covered dish, they want to see how many people eat their stuff. Amen. And so they stand off head to the side and watch. <laughs> and they say stuff like this, if they ain't gonna eat my greens, I'm taking <laughs> I'm taking them back home. If they ain't gonna eat my pie, if they don't like potato salad with paprika, paprika sprinkled on the top of it. With all that shrimp, I cook up in it. That's how my mama cooks hers. I can't wait to get that today. Maybe there's some prepared. But we sit back and watch and operate in comparison. I want to hand you then three conclusions that are wrapped up in this text concerning this issue of haterism and the consumption of haterade. Here's the first Conclusion: Jesus can deliver haterade addiction. Jesus can deliver haterade addiction. Hey, you may not be able to. Okay, uh, for some of us who you know have some experiences with people, I, I've had some people to tell me over the years. People used to be shy about stuff. I don't know why they ain't shy no more. People tell me straight up, point blank, I don't like you. My Lord. Tell me. <laughs> Several times I've had people tell me, I don't like you. And what I used to try to do, Brother Reg, was try to convince them why they should like me. Because I think I'm likable. I, I, so I used to try and say, well, hold on now, you don't like me, you don't know me. So I used to try to say, well, here's why you should like me. And I discovered over time that the reason you can't talk some people out of disliking you is because you never talked them into it in the first place. Right. Because the stuff they dislike about you is the stuff the Lord put on you to start with. And if you don't like the anointing, you won't like who the anointing rests on. Come on. Come on. So I discovered ain't no need of me trying to talk you out of what I didn't already talk you into. I can't do it, but God can. Notice that when Philip finds Nathaniel, he says, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth. What's interesting about, interesting about that message is this is the same message that Andrew used to get Simon Peter and it worked. Yet when Philip used it, it wasn't enough to convince Nathaniel. 
But the more you keep reading, by the time you get to verse 49, the same Nathaniel who was walking in disbelief is now walking in belief. Nathaniel was hung up on Jesus' hometown. Jesus was from Nazareth. And Nazareth in their day, some scholars believe, was filled with some of the most cutthroat, ruthless people on the planet. And when Nathaniel heard that Jesus was from Nazareth, he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Watch Philip's response. Come and see. What Philip was saying was, I can't change you, but if you meet him for yourself, he can change you. You know what I'm learning to do, Sister Tammy, is take people, put them in the Lord's hands, and leave them there. Because watch this. You don't have to tell your side of the story. Time will. <laughs> Y'all didn't come to have no church. Some show, just leave it alone. Time will tell its own story. I don't like you because you did this. I don't like you because I heard you say that. Just give it some time. And time will tell the whole story. Jesus can deliver haterade addictions. By the time you get to verse 49, he brings deliverance. Verse 47, Jesus says, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guide. King of Ma Message Bible says he doesn't have a false bone in his body. Watch Nathaniel's response in verse 48. Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Or how do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Jesus said, You don't know me, but I know you. Watch Nathaniel's response in verse 49. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. So, so I tell you, my mama used to ask me when I was a child, my sister had already left the house and got married, and my mama would ask me to peel potatoes. But what my mom did not fully understand is the degree to which I am a perfectionist. And in my desire to do everything perfectly, some potatoes have spots on them. And when I was peeling the potato, I wanted to cut down below the dark spot because I didn't think the dark spot should be in the potato salad. So I would peel and peel and peel till I didn't see any more dark spot. And what started out as a potato ended up as a french fry. <laughs> and finally my mama said, boy, give me that bowl of potatoes. We ain't gonna have nothing left to eat with the way you're peeling. And some of the people in your life, you have cut them off like you were trying to cut out the dark spot of a potato. And God says that some of the people you have cut out, you should have left in. Mm. And instead of you trying to fix them, you should have let me work on them. Come on. Why? Not all haters are bad people. Jesus can deliver haterade addiction. Now, that doesn't mean that some folks, you don't have, you, sometimes you got to love folks that are distant. Because right. right. I'm clickish. Get a little clickish. <laughs> so I, I, I don't argue with people no more. Amen. I just say, that's how you feel? Amen. God bless you. Amen. I love you. Over there. <laughs> you 
you stay over there. In the Lord's hands. So that you don't have to come over here. And can't these hands. Some of y'all say deep, spiritual. I'm honest. I'm going to leave you over there. Say anything you want to say. Go on, pop off, go ahead on. I'm going to love you over there. But don't you come over here. Because you pay your way here, I'm going to pay your way back. <laughs> Do not come for me. It's a sinner. Jesus can deliver. Hey, Ray, addiction. Hey, there's a second conclusion in the text. Not only does the text prove that Jesus can deliver haterade addictions, but I also want to tell you that Jesus has delivered haterade addictions. We see it in Nathaniel. In uh, the book of Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar raised up a golden statue in honor of his fictitious God, and he said that everyone who sees the statue when a certain music is played, they are to bow down and worship my fictitious God and worship the statue that I have created. But there were some boys in the crowd and all they knew was to worship God. Come on. And the music played and the boys didn't bow. Come on. Their names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Their names had been changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had already been placed in positions of leadership, even though they were Hebrews and they were living in Babylon. The other leaders in Babylon, when they saw that the Hebrews didn't bow, they ran to Nebuchadnezzar and said, didn't you say that anybody who didn't bow when the music was played, that they were to be thrown into a burning fiery furnace. And they said, these three Hebrew boys that you got here refuse to bow when the music is played. Nebuchadnezzar said, bring them to me. He said to them, now boys, I understand that you ain't been bowing when the music plays. He said, I'm going to give you another chance. The music is about to play, and I want you to bow. Their response was, King, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Uh, because we serve one God and we only bow to him. They say, now we know that you've already put it on record that anyone who does not bow will be thrown into a fiery furnace. They say, King, the God that we serve can deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we still won't bow. King's response was, I'm throwing you not only into a furnace, but I'm going to have the furnace heated seven times hotter than its normal temperature. They said, fire up. <laughs> the furnace is heated. The flames are so hot until the men who are throwing them into the furnace are killed by the flame. And the Bible says they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with their hands tied into the furnace and they fell when they touched the Bible. Come on. Don't miss that. Come on. Sometimes the Lord, even while he's delivering you, will still let you fall. You didn't give a lesson. You didn't give a lesson. They fell into the fire. The Bible says the king got up and he was astonished and went to check the furnace. And when he looked into the opening of the furnace, he said, didn't we throw three men in there? He said, I see four men. And all of them are walking around loose. Don't miss that. When they were thrown in, they were bound. When they got in the fire, they were loose. <laughs> when they were thrown in, they were bound. Uh, when they got in the fire, they were loose. When they were thrown in, they were bound. 
When they got in the fire, they were loose, and there was a fourth man in the fire. King James Version says that Nebuchadnezzar's response was, the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Literally meant in their day, the fourth one looks like the Son of a God. God had gotten in the fire with them. Hey, the Bible says they suffered no hurt from the fire. Not even a hair on their heads were singed, and they didn't even smell like smoke. That means they didn't look like what they had been through. And the only thing the fire burned off of them was what the world had put on them. So, Kiana, why did the king get up and look in the first place? Why did he go check the furnace? reason he had to get up and go check is because this was not his first time throwing people into furnaces. Uh -huh. And normally, there is something you hear when the person hits the furnace. Uh -huh. Normally, when the fire gets on, they scream. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the king was waiting to hear the scream. Uh -huh. But when he threw those boys in, yeah. didn't hear a sound. Uh -huh. Could it be that the reason some of the people in your life keep pushing your buttons is because you keep giving them the same response you've been giving them? But a day is going to come where they push your button and they just don't get the same response. You got some people uh, used to be on your job, now you're working from home. They would walk by you and wouldn't speak and it would mess your whole day up. You've been praying the whole day. Walked by me and didn't speak. And it just gets real bad when you speak to them and they don't speak back. Try something new. Let them walk by and don't speak. And you start singing, What a friend we have with you. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to count. Everything to God in prayer. When the king looks in, sees four men walking around loose in the fire. He says, get those boys out of there. And then he announced to them, the God who delivered you is higher than any other God. And then he puts out a decree that anyone who speaks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall have their bodies torn apart limb from limb and their houses destroyed. Because there's no God like their God. What am I getting at? He started off drinking a gallon of haterade. Saying, who is this God that will deliver you? But when God delivered, even Nebuchadnezzar had to say, can't nobody do it like Jesus. God can deliver haterade addictions. God has delivered haterade addictions. Let me say finally that God will deliver all haterade addictions. He who laughs last, laughs, laughs longest. And there is a day coming when every God hater will have to admit that there is but one God. In Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 through verse 11, Paul describes a day that is coming for all of humanity. He says, a day is coming that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Which means you got all kind of people now, you know, I, I, I guess because some of the circles I travel in, people say there is no God and they don't have to believe in him. Mm, wait a while. A day is going to come when every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess to the glory of God the Father. 
one day God's going to put all, all your haters in their place. That's why you need to make sure that your haters are his haters. <laughs> that the reason they're hating you is because of the God that's on the inside of you. And, and if that's the reason they hate you, you don't have to fight your own. You don't have to mess up your good clothes. Get outside of your character because of somebody who doesn't mean that much in the first place. Because somebody's going to send you a message that they don't like you. Here's what you need to send them back in the spirit. That that is a matter of their opinion. And their opinion does not matter. <laughs> How you going to tell me you don't like my clothes? You didn't buy my clothes. I don't like your hair. You, you, this ain't your. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. I got to love you. Yeah, yeah. But I ain't got to like you. This is too much for y'all. I don't like everybody. Oh, y'all so deep. I don't like people. I love them. I love them. And see, when you genuinely love people, it changes everything about your disposition. With them. But you, you, don't, you don't have to like them. I can love you, but you ain't coming over my house to eat. Because I might have to leave my plate on the table and go back in the kitchen and I come back, I don't know what you done put in there. So I'm going to leave in his hands. So you don't have to catch that. All haters are not bad people. You can't fix them. But the Lord can. And all the people say, All over the school. God can't deliver. God has delivered. God will deliver. Learn how to lead people in the Lord's hand. Stop messing up your whole night's sleep. Worry about somebody who dislikes you. For stuff you ain't got nothing to do with. Your whole week thrown off. I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they did that. And you spent an hour and a half trying to figure out what you did to, to hurt their feelings or give you a bad impression. And some people, they don't like themselves that much. Let alone liking you. And it's bad enough if you're struggling with yourself. For me to turn around and now I'm going to struggle with your opinion. Some people are like clouds without water. All they have is something to say. Miserable. You got to preach fast Miserable in public. Miserable yeah. in private. Don't let them pull you into yeah. that foolishness. Yeah. And just like Philip did. Philip said, now I done told you we found the Messiah. I done told you he's the one that Moses wrote about. He's the one that the prophets wrote about. And all you responded with is, can anything come out of his own time? Philip said, you know what? I done had enough of you. Come see for yourself. Amen. And when Nathaniel met Jesus, Jesus did what Philip could not. Philip put it in the Lord's I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. That the Lord will deliver you from comparisons. That the Lord will deliver you from bitterness. From hatred. From envy. From jealousy. Because it can eat away at you. And bring you destruction. Also, if you're in this room and you need to give your heart and life to the Lord, I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's so many things that we cannot do 
but you can do all things. Help us to keep our eyes on you and not to be moved by the opinions of others. Thank you for reminding us that our assignment often brings those who dislike us. But as long as you are pleased, it does not matter who's displeased. Keep us the same. Lord, I pray for those who do not know you, that today would be the day that they would get to know you, that they would come off of the enemy's side and come over onto your side. I pray, Lord, that you cover each of us, keep us in good health, protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Continue to give us every dream and to rebuke every nightmare. We claim it done even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a great big amen. A great big amen. I find somebody in the spirit and tell them I'm moving from catering. <laughs>